Hello and welcome back to another edition of Check It Out. Okay friends, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of fixing the backflow preventer here at my house. You can see right here, it's leaking out of that bottom little white rectangle down there. I don't even know how long it was leaking for, hopefully not too long. However, um, I watched several videos here on YouTube. Some of them were very helpful to helping me diagnose the problem. However, my problem was not a very typical one. So I'll walk you through how I started with what everyone was saying was, was the most obvious problems and how I ended up fixing it. So this is the 825Y by Febco. And there's my backflow preventer right there. Now if you look on the left and right of that backflow preventer, there's some valves so I can turn on and off the water. And there's also two um, check valves and we'll talk about those in just a minute. And then there's also a pressure relief valve. So there's kind of three different mechanisms within this backflow preventer. Now again, I'm only a homeowner. I have sort of become an expert at this by studying it for uh, several days. And again, the different videos on YouTube, I found some of them very helpful. But again, everyone was saying that that backflow preventer, um, there's a check valve, the first one that you can see on the top right here, and I'll point it out in a second, is the one that's the most obvious and probably going to be the one to fix. Now here I'm pointing to that valve. Both my valves are on. My water in this system goes from the right to the left, and I'm turning that valve off. Now again, when I turn that off, the only thing this turns off, the only thing this water goes to is my sprinkler system. This does not go to my water supply that goes to my house. So I'm pointing here to the top uh, check valve. That is the one that if you turn off the water on the left for this system, again, the water goes from right to left, so I turn that off. If it's still leaking down there, they're saying that it's gonna be that top check valve is gonna be the most common one to fail or have a problem with. There is a check valve I just pointed to a second ago that is the exact same thing, except it's on the bottom and it's a little further down the line, just a couple inches. So I'm gonna open up, uh, sorry, I'm gonna turn off the water. So now that uh, backflow preventer is really isolated, right? I've got the water off on the right and the water off on the left. The water comes from the right, it goes to the left. So I'm gonna take that cap off right there. Now this is spring loaded. So as I feel that I'm um, coming closer and closer to that cap coming off, I'm gonna cover it up so that it doesn't, the, the spring doesn't cause different parts to go flying all over the place. It's not that spring loaded, so it's not like it's gonna really fly all over. But at the same time, if you just kind of put your hand on it like I'm doing right there, then those parts will make sure that I, not only I don't lose them, but I can kind of see how they come apart so I can put it back together correctly. You've got a spring there and there's a cap. And then inside is that check valve. So this is the piece that everyone was saying is the most common to either be damaged, broken, cracked, or there's this seal on it. And they were saying that the seal might be, um, have some debris on it. Now also I wanna check in here, I'm kind of checking with my finger where that check valve sits to make sure that there's no debris or corrosion or anything like that going on. It felt like it was pretty clean to me. And then I'm actually gonna turn on the water here just for a second, just to kind of clean that thing out. Now I'm gonna take a look at this, this black seal that is here. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape, but I've seen several people say that what you can do is just get this, take it apart, and then flip that seal upside down and turn it around. And if this hasn't been done before, then the back side of that seal hopefully is in good condition. Now again, if that seal is not in good condition, I'll show you in a minute that you can purchase these parts online. And um, you know, again, I'll give you some strategies on how you can get by for those three or four days while you have to wait for the parts. For me, I was able to flip it around. And again, I'm thinking to myself, this looks pretty clean. I don't see anything obvious that would cause a leak here. But I know that it's very important that these parts are very, very clean. So you gotta make sure you have clean hands, the parts look clean, no debris in there whatsoever. So if I did need to purchase this check valve, or just the seals, which I'll show you a picture of in just a second right here, 
Um, you can go online and find these parts, and I'll put a link down in the description below that you can purchase these online. However, Home Depot and these other places like that, even the plumbing supply, did not have these in stock. You have to buy them online. So for me, it looked like everything was in pretty good shape, so I put it back together. I was kind of hoping that maybe there was a little bit of debris that was causing the leak that maybe I just didn't really see. Unfortunately for me, I'm going to put it all back together here, and my system is still going to leak. So having a nice heavy-duty wrench on this one was really helpful. I, I took these caps on and off a few different times trying to diagnose the problem. So this adjustable wrench or crescent wrench really was helpful. So here I am now, I'm going to turn on slowly the valve on the left and then slowly that valve on the right. And I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that's going to be the uh, solution, even though I really didn't see a problem. Um, I was hoping that somehow that would remove a little bit of debris or something like that, that could have possibly been in the way. However, that's not the case. This still leaked the exact same. So it's still leaking down there. So my next plan is going to be to turn the system back off. So that valve on the right, I am going to turn that off. The valve on the left, I'm going to close that one off. And now this check valve on the bottom I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the top, except I'm going to take the one off on the bottom and we're going to see if there's any debris or anything that's broken that could be causing this system to leak. So it's the exact same procedure as the top, except we're going to do it on the bottom and I'll save you some time. This did not work for me. It was everything seemed to be in good shape and that was not the problem. So that moves us on to the pressure relief valve. So let's check that out and see what kind of condition it's in. So my pressure relief valve is that circle piece right there. It's four bolts holding it together. Okay, so now I'm gonna take off these four bolts. Now this pressure relief valve, this circle cap that I'm taking off also has a spring, it's spring loaded. So take it off very carefully. There's also a diaphragm in there. So we wanna be kind of gentle as we're doing that. And I'm pointing out that of course we have the valves both turned off. And I'm taking this off in a little bit of a pattern here, trying to take it off sort of in equal parts. And my thought process was, I know there's a diaphragm right there, and if I can, I wanna keep that diaphragm in good shape. Although you'll find out at the end that I end up replacing that diaphragm anyway, so it really didn't matter all that much. Okay, so you can see that black piece, that is that diaphragm. Again, I wanna be careful with that. And I'm kinda of inspecting it. It doesn't seem to have any rips or tears or anything like that. If it did, I could go online right here and purchase a new one. And this is a kit that just has that diaphragm and a few other little pieces. And now I'm going to pull straight out gently and this cartridge that's in here, this is where my problem is. So this cartridge, there's a crack in this piece right here. And that is where my leak was coming from. So that is the piece that I'm going to need to replace. So you can see there that it is clearly cracked and that is going to have to be replaced. I don't see any way I could possibly fix that. Unfortunately for how sort of simple that piece looks, it's a little bit expensive. Here is a, a picture of it that I purchased online. Again, I'll put a link in the description to this. So while I was waiting for these parts to come in the mail for four days, I ended up putting this all back together and it still leaked the same. However, I would leave these valve turned off 
when I was not running my sprinkler system. And then I would simply turn these valves on when I was running my sprinkler system. And of course it would leak when it was running the sprinklers and it would fill up that trash can a little bit, but it really wasn't a big deal. So I did that for about four days and just turn it on when the sprinklers would run. Otherwise I would turn off the system. For me, it was a pretty slow drip. It would fill up the trash can in like two hours. It really wasn't a problem. And I'm showing you the kit that I ended up buying online. There's the new piece right there. Again, it took about uh, three or four days. I think it was four days. It's got a little bit of lubricant in here as well. And then there's one, um, oh, there's the diaphragm. So I ended up replacing that. And there's a little gasket there that I uh, will show you where that goes in just a second. So now I have my new part. I'm gonna turn the water off. You can see both those valves are closed. I'm gonna open this thing back up. Let's take out the old part and let's put in our new part. Here I'm just showing that this, uh, you know, I double checked online that this part that I purchased would fit this unit, this backflow preventer. So here you can see I've got my old diaphragm and the new one right here. I'm gonna check the sizing, check the holes, make sure everything lines up. Now I'll pull that cartridge straight out and kind of gently again. So here I'm just double checking. Is the new part, does it match the old part? Yes, they look uh, identical. I, I don't see any differences whatsoever. So that's great news, obviously. So I'm just putting a small amount of lubricant around that gasket and then we'll go ahead and install it. Now when I'm putting that new diaphragm on there, I really wanna make sure that I'm matching the holes up correctly. Just little by little working my way around in that star pattern and tightening it up. So now I've got that nice and snug. We'll cross our fingers, say a little prayer, gently open up that valve on the left. That's the one that heads out to the sprinkler system. And then I'm gonna slowly and gently turn on the water supply on that right hand side. I don't wanna slam that open. I just want that pressure coming in as gently as I can. And then I'll go ahead and open it up all the way. And success, there is no leak. So the final step I'm gonna do is call my water company and explain to them that I have been working on that system. I want them to come out and they can hook up some equipment to this uh, backflow preventer and they can make sure that it is working correctly. So that's an important step that I wanna make sure that I do. Hey friends, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Hey, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to have a great day out there and smile because you just figured out how to fix your backflow preventer. See you next time.